One of the reasons why we are conducting a session like this is because of concerns coming out of the results of tests on blocks produced by manufacturers in Jamaica. So we want to set up training programs whereby we can meet the block manufacturers and advise them as to how they can improve the quality of their blocks. The JS35 standard that governs the making of hollow concrete blocks is a standard that is monitored by the regulatory arm or the regulatory entity that is now evolving out of the Bureau of Standards, which is a national compliance regulatory authority. When the monitoring activities are carried out and we see that hollow concrete block makers are failing to achieve the requirements of the JS35 standard, the red flag goes up and we are concerned. As the producer of one of the main products that is used for the manufacture of blocks, we want to ensure that our customers and our end users know how to use our product and to use it properly and adequately. So we decided to partner with Dr. Dose, who was formerly at the Bureau and instrumental in the development of the standards and to, do, and to partner with Hart, who is well known for their training facilities and to train you, the first set of trainers who will go forth and train the rest of the country. Part of our trust is actually to have a certified workforce. So it is important that we come on board to offer training. Now, one of the first form of training that we are looking to offer is actually training for our instructors across our branch network so that um, when we are ready to roll out the training island-wide to the rest of the block manufacturers, we would actually have competent and capable persons to carry out the training. This is the up upgraded version, a retrofitted version of the normal two-dropper, one-hand bandit machine. You know of it. One-hand bandit with both Levi's up here. This block was manufactured using percentage of sand, if you look, you can examine the aggregate instead of dark volcanic rock being exposed there. Most manufacturers don't like using sand, as we call it, because it is harder, tend to be sharper if it's manufactured sand, so it's abrasive on the mold, so it wears the mold, right? Evidence of it can be seen here. This block, if you look wow. on the texture here, you can see the unevenness of the surface there. This is due to wear of the mold. Uh, this block was actually made from a small machine who was making an effort to make a stronger block. So we talk about the quality control factors to allow for an optimum quality block and that's a consistent quality. So we need to pay attention to these factors. One, good clean aggregates. Two, the correct aggregate grading and proportioning. So we're not using a single size of aggregate. It would fill out and get all of the um, spaces filled out. Optimum amount of clean water. Note there are two things there. The optimum as well as clean water. Water used for concrete, all concrete should be potable. There are instances where because of um, availability, people use salt, salt water. That in and of itself is not an issue except when you're using reinforcing. So if you use salt water to, con to construct reinforced concrete, you are setting yourself up for a problem. Care Cement believes that if we're able to assist trainers, these trainers will be able to show the members, the people in the industry, how to manufacture proper concrete blocks that will adhere to the standard. So we've encouraged HART to send out as many of their trainers to learn the ways of manufacturing a good concrete block that adheres to the standards that exist in Jamaica.